Hi everyone. This is the last session um, in many ways, both of a class and it's uh, of the ADA process. And in this instance, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Assure function and an overall very, very quick glimpse at a case study of the uh, John Kennedy. Uh, it is an interesting historical sidelight, I think, that Kennedy was the last of the conventionally powered aircraft carriers. Her hull, as you can see just by looking at the photo here, is strikingly similar to the nuclear powered carriers that uh, dominate our fleet today. Um, but for a series of budgetary reasons, the Navy was sort of strong-armed into deciding to build the Kennedy with a conventional power plant. But I digress a little bit, and we should be talking more about Ashore, which we can go on to now. Uh, what I want you to try and understand is that once you've begun to implement something, it's probably worthwhile. In fact, it's really essential for you to go back and try and make sure that you're actually understanding that you're making progress or that you're not making progress and that you need to change your course of action. Uh, if you don't understand those things, then my guess is that you're going to spend an awful lot of time and effort and you're not going to be anywhere near as successful as you might like to be. So back to our original graphic. This is the one you've seen in each of the previous sessions. We're all the way to the right now. And as I began talking about the, this uh, cascading set of uh, boxes, I want to emphasize again that each of them feeds one off the other and then back again. So that uh, as we are working implementation, we want to assure that we're trying to make progress towards it. And as we understand how much or how little progress we're making, that feeds back to implementation and in fact, that can go back to trying to revisit some of the fundamental decisions we've made. So as we look at the overall Assure function, one of the things we want to understand is that there is a distinction between inputs and outputs, and there's a distinction between outputs and outcomes, and there is some activity in between, which is a process. Uh, we are mostly interested in the Department of Defense, not just in efficiency, but in effectiveness. And that really is the amount of outcome that we get, the missions accomplished and so on, uh, per things done, and that's a certain service or product. And a reliable measure of those outcomes is not, it is not the inputs that we go into it. While we need to track that, we need to understand the resources that have been devoted to uh, those inputs. Uh, simply saying that we spent an awful lot of money on training doesn't really mean that we end up with uh, trained sailors. We have an outcome of a trained sailor and we need to measure that apart from simply the input. There are a couple of ways in which people have looked at this over time. The balanced scorecard is one that uh, has had a lot of uh, favorable press. It tries to understand how we look at the stakeholders, resources, internal processes, and learning and growth to achieve mission and achieve the vision of an organization. Most typically for balanced scorecard, it is a private organization, but certainly not exclusively so. And uh, I'll leave it to you uh, if you are interested in pursuing balanced scorecard to go and, and uh, take a look at that. But you get some idea as to these are the kinds of things you need to be able to measure. These are the th kinds of things you need to be able to evaluate if you want to be sure that you're trying to actually accomplish the mission that you've set out for yourself. We tend to look a little bit more at Simon's uh, levers of control. There are four of them. Um, both the uh, balanced scorecard and the levers of control are, are pretty well understood in the academic community and are pretty well implemented in the business community as well. Um, in this instance, you can see that uh, Simon's levers of control include belief systems, boundary systems, interactive and diagnostic uh, control systems. And they really look at different kinds of things in order to try and understand. So just to look at one of them, risks to be avoided, 
uh, as you are looking into contracting uh, system and several of you have talked about some of the scandals with Fat Leonard and as we looked at ethics, uh, risks to be avoided, uh, you don't break the law and you don't even come close to breaking the law. You follow that really critically and that's a boundary for you as you go forward. Uh, each of these has similar kinds of elements that can be explored and that you need to understand in order to try and evaluate whether or not you're making good progress. Uh, so this begins to try and talk a little bit more about the kinds of empowerment that can come by instantiating the levers of control, and it tells you the kinds of things that you hope to achieve by getting to all of them. And then we talk a little bit about the case study, and I'm not going to go into detail on the case study. We will talk about it in discussion board some, and um, you'll get a good view of it then. Kennedy, at the time of the case, was uh, frankly under duress. Uh, she had managed to fail an in-serve. Uh, those of you who have been at sea know that this is not a good day. Captain Henderson was brought in to try and fix it. And he goes about uh, trying to do it. He does it by uh, beginning with an assessment and doing a uh, SWOT kind of analysis. He defines the mission, uh, as you can see here. Uh, what's striking is that he actually spends a good bit of time uh, looking at Kennedy and realizing that he has sort of a unique opportunity because the big Navy elements of this wanted Kennedy to be successful. They actually needed the carrier at that point in time, even though most everybody recognized that uh, operating Kennedy was going to be extremely expensive because of the conventional power that it used. Uh, so we've got all of these things. The biggest problem in a lot of this was that um, as you look at the processes and stakeholders, uh, people were falsifying inspections and as a result of the culture and, and the uh, mistakes that were made aboard Kennedy, external stakeholders really didn't believe that the ship could be brought back to being useful again. Uh, in a sort of SWAT matrix here, you can see some of the strengths and opportunities. The strengths are, are really in green, the weaknesses tend to be in red, um, and this graphically shows what it was that Henderson found when he came aboard. Uh, there was a huge problem in both the condition of the ship, it was not in good shape when Henderson comes aboard, and the culture of the ship was, and not only is it not in good shape, it's the only conventionally powered ship and it's just going to be retired soon so it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to do what we can to try and get out of here without too much damage to our careers. Uh, <clears throat> Henderson has a series of, of different choices. He thought that he had need, understood that he needed to worry about process and culture. But he really tried to understand the idea that, look, I'm going to try and uh, do both of these because if I only do one, I'm not going to be successful. And he then worried about trying to get all of these things changed. And he focuses a lot on human capital. Uh, while there's a certain amount of technology and other stuff there, it seems to me his biggest efforts were to try and change the behavior of the sailors on board the ship. And he then tries to implement this, and he actually looks at control systems almost explicitly using Simon's stuff. Um, and I'll leave it to you to try and fill out this particular part of the uh, box uh, as to which it was you thought uh, Henderson used most effectively uh, and perhaps which ones worked and did not work. So I think that the takeaways for this, the, the biggest single takeaway is the idea of um, what gets measured gets done, even if it's not necessarily important. Uh, so you need to be, pay attention to what it is you're trying to do. Uh, you need to try and make sure you understand when you choose measures of success or, or assurance measures that they actually are related to what it is you're trying to accomplish. And that those measures work uh, to try and help the organization move forward. Understand that both balanced scorecard and the uh, levers of control are one possible or two possible systems out of many, many hundreds that are available 
but at least they will give you some idea that, that this is a very, very rich field uh, that can be used to your benefit. And as has been the case for all of our ADA work, I've attached a series of backup slides for your reference.